Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Master's House. Uh, you are on Facebook Live, but we are here in person at the Master's House in Henrico, Virginia, just a little bit north of Richmond, Virginia, and we're on Staples Mill Road, 8659 Staples Mill Road, right near Parham, and we are the Master's House. My wife's over here, Katie. She's running some IT things today for our guest speaker, so uh, you won't see her, but she looks good, that's for sure. And uh, we're really glad you're here. Let's all welcome our our online friends. Amen. We've been here since 11. We have worship. We've been worshiping the Lord, and we also had some uh, things to say about Father's Day. We want to wish everybody a happy Father's Day today, Amen. and the importance of fathers. We talked about that, and uh, you are important. Oh, important. You are important, Dad, and uh, God's looking for you to be a representation of God himself. Amen? Amen. And uh, that's where the pressure is, but uh, if you want to learn how to do that, uh, send me an email, Pastor Jim at tmhnow.org, and I'll give you some information on a great way, an easy way to bring the Word of God into your home and be the leader that you need to be. Can somebody say amen? amen. And so, um, uh, but we we also have, well, so we met last night uh, with our guest speaker, Dwayne Norman, who's right here, and his wife, Leah. I'll introduce him in a minute. And he taught last night on how to hear the voice of God. Amen. And it was excellent. And uh, so that's still on Facebook. You can get that, uh, just go back a little bit in the, in the send on the Master's House Facebook page. And you can listen to that. And we'll also be posting that on our uh, TMHRVA uh, YouTube site and our TMHNOW.org website for the church very soon so you can get those, that message there. But he's also gonna be here tonight yes. at seven o'clock tonight. And so you uh, right here live on Facebook, we'll start right at seven o'clock or ish. You never know how that goes, but uh, so I hope you can join us. Let's have a word of prayer. And Father, I thank you for this service. I thank you for Dwayne and Leah coming all, all the way from Sterling, Kentucky, and to minister us to us in the word. Thank you so much for last night's message. And uh, we received by faith this morning's message. And also tonight, we uh, look forward to it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Uh, let's welcome Dwayne Norman. Come on up here, Dwayne. Amen. Amen. Now you can come in. Now you can come in. out the way. And uh, this is my friend, Dr. Dwayne Norman. Amen. He's taller than I am. Bless God forevermore. I do look short. Stand up all the way. Well, you know, there's a lot of blessings in small things. And so, uh, but we've known each other a long, long time. We didn't really figure out. About 40 years. About 40 years. Four decades. Yeah, and he's been ministering here at the Master's House ever since the beginning. And uh, it's just a blessing to have you here. Great one of my favorite you. Bible teachers and one of your favorite. Amen. And I just don't slap my, my ring on there. I do that all the time. I don't really like to do that. My wife doesn't like me to do that. But it's okay. She's listening. Yeah. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, so, uh, and then a lot of things that you're doing uh, that people need to know about. For one, you're on Faith Radio. Yeah. And you're on Faith Radio, I think, 12 times a week. 14. 14 times a week he's on Faith Radio. Word of Faith Radio Word, Network. Yeah, Word of Faith Radio Network. You can get it online, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, then um, you have how many books that you've written? 20. 20 books that he's written, and we got a number of them back there. Tell us how to get find out more about you. Okay. You can use I your, think I'm on here, aren't yeah, I? You should. You should. Um, if you go over to um, uh, our website, our website is uh, Dwayne Norman Ministries. Dwayne is D-W-A-Y-N-E, Dwayne Norman Ministries dot O-R-G dot org. And when that site opens up, you'll see a bunch of boxes, and one box will say ministry products. And But several of the boxes, when you click it on, I'll have information about our YouTube channel and things like that. Uh, if you go to, uh, go to our YouTube, if you go to YouTube and type in our YouTube channel name, that's Dwayne Norman, Victory in the Word, you can subscribe to our channel, which is free. Dwayne Norman, Victory in the Words, six words. And uh, when, that, when, you, when that opens up, you'll see a picture of me and my wife at the top of the page. And below that will be a red subscribe button and a little bell. Just click those on, it'll connect you with us. That way it'll notify every time. We, I go live every week with a new half hour teaching video on our YouTube channel. And we probably have about close to 600 audio and video messages on now on there now. So they're all free to watch. I always tell people you can go to Bible school for free there you go. on our YouTube channel. And um, and then uh, the Word of Faith Radio Network, that's wofr.org, <coughs> wofr.org, and we're on Monday through Fridays at 4 o'clock, and Monday through Fridays at 7.30, then Saturday mornings at 7.30, and Sunday night from 8 till 9 o'clock. So we're on a lot on the Word of Faith Radio Network. 
Plus, we're on um, uh, all of our books, um, especially for those outside the nation. All of our books are on Amazon. If you go to Amazon.com and just type in Dwayne Norman Books, you'll find all 20 of our books. Very cool. And you need to know, their, you need to know the count because they're never in order. That way you'll know when you find them and so many other uh, sites on the Internet we're on, too. Amen. Right. A lot of stuff. Well, we're real happy that you're here. Thank you so much for coming. And take it. Run with it. Thank you, Pastor. It's all yours. Thank you. And it's, um, I appreciate all those that are here in the service but thank you for all of you who are watching by the internet Amen. i always say this i like getting the word out on the internet because um you never know there but there could be presidents of other nations that are Amen. tuning into this right now yes. right. and and you'll never know it till you get to heaven probably That's unless right. god open let you know somehow so you never know who's watching who knows there could be you know all kinds of ungodly perverted people watching they don't want anybody to know they're watching you know <laughs> But they're hearing the word. Yeah. And Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will do what? Set you free. It will set you free. Praise God. Well, stand up with me one more time. Katie, you don't have to. You want to hold that laptop down there. And uh, let's lift our hands and worship the Lord. Thank you. Father, we thank worship you. you. Thank you. Oh, we just want to start by praising you and thanking thank you for you, how Jesus. much you thank love us, you. for how good you are to us, your goodness and mercies and grace are always overflowing us. They're more than enough. Your grace was more enough for Jesus to redeem all of humanity. It's definitely more than enough for us to do what you've called us to do. More than enough. More than enough all the time. And we love you, Father. Lord Jesus, we worship you. You're our King, our Lord, and our Savior. And we praise your glorious name. Oh, we just plead your blood over all of us here. Thank you for your holy, righteous, redeeming, precious blood. And dear Holy Spirit, we welcome you to have your way in the service yes. in our lives, we welcome you. We give you permission. We want you to say everything you yes. want to say, yes. do whatever you want to do in yes. our lives and through us. Whatever right. it is, oh, we're here, we're available. We yes. welcome you to have your way. And Father, in Jesus' name, teach yes. us your word. Teach us more about uh, flowing in your anointing, about bringing our supply, about why we're on this earth, what, how yes. you want our voices to be heard, how to successfully yeah. do all that you've called us to do in Jesus' name. And we receive that from you. Yes. Now say this with me. Say, Father, Father in Jesus' name, in Jesus name, I receive from your anointing I receive from your in anointing. here today. I receive your word, I receive and your I receive word. my faith, I receive my greatly faith. increased, greatly in increased. Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated. Glory to God. The Word's good, isn't it? Yes. yes. The Word is so good. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, we had a good time last night, so I'd highly recommend you go back and listen to that message yes. on yes. how to hear the voice of God. It's very simple and very practical. I believe it will help you tremendously. And um, I want to talk to you. Remember, I, I kind of, I was saying this, these three services, last night and this morning and tonight, the, I, I, I thought I'd call the overall title for the whole, you could call the whole seminars, uh, flowing, in the, flowing in the Spirit, Flowing in the Spirit, or How to Flow in the Spirit, or Just Flowing in the Spirit. But last night's service, well, you know, we could call How to Hear the Voice of God, that's what I talked about. This morning, I want to, we could title this, Bring Your Supply. Bring, see, when you flow in the spirit, you're bringing a supply. Yeah. yeah. Bring your supply. Bring your supply. And um, tonight, I'm going to talk about a message that I call true normalcy. What it means to be normal. Mm. We're going to see if y'all are normal. <laughs> we'll find out tonight. How, we'll find out how tonight how normal you are. But I want to start off by, um, uh, I want you to turn over to John chapter uh, 14 with me. Again, uh, remember... Um, um, since, you know, church starts at 11, see that clock back there? It's 20 till 12, so don't be thinking I'm quitting at 12. <laughs> if we started at 10, I probably would. But we start at 11 now, so yeah. I'm not going to go a long time, but I will go past 12. So don't get that number 12 in your mind, because we're here. To, I want to give you a better meal than 20 minutes. Amen. want to give you a better meal. You want to get your money's worth for coming, don't you? Right. Yes. Yeah, yes. There you absolutely. go. Well, what, I want to bring this out. I just, um, I, you know, I teach at two different Bible schools. I teach at Dr. Norval Hayes Bible School mm -hmm. in Cleveland, Tennessee. I go in, at least we have been, going in usually a couple times a year and teaching for about 10 hours. Wow. We do a Monday through Friday night services from uh, uh, about 6 to 8 and uh, two hours a, a, a service. Mm -hmm. And so they can record it for their Bible school. 
I think each 10 hour each 10 hours we teach is like one credit hour for the Bible school so I've taught a lot there I've already taught I think over probably around 80 hours already towards that and uh, last time we were there and I, I'm, I taught I'm teaching the book of Acts mm. been having a good time teaching on the book of Acts and uh, I taught for 10 hours and got about halfway through chapter 6 <laughs> so we're going back in and teach another 10 and see if we can finish the book of Acts this time I, I think we will but we're gonna we're, we're gonna try our best to but one one point I bring out about the book of Acts is that um, in, in talking about the Lord Jesus remember Jesus is our example to follow isn't he yeah we follow him we follow in his steps he's our leader he's our Lord we're his body but he's our head he gives us orders yeah. we don't give him orders he tells us what to do the head tells the body what to do the body doesn't tell the head what to do and uh, one thing about Jesus life and ministry he always depended on the Holy Spirit for everything. Mm -hmm. And when I teach on this, and I'm, I'm really not going quite this direction this morning, but you, you need to know, if you don't already know this, that, of course, Jesus, when he came to this earth, he was all God and all man. Mm -hmm. He wasn't 50% God and 50% man making a total of 100%. Don't exactly. think of it that way. He was 100% man, 100% God, united in one person, mm -hmm. and we call that the incarnation. He was the incarnate one. So, but he laid aside his glory when he came to this earth. That didn't mean he laid aside his Godhead. No, he was still all God. But what that means is, if you don't already know this, and a lot of Christians don't know this, is that Jesus, he never worked any miracles. Not one miracle because he was God. Remember, he always called himself the Son of Man. If you look it up in Strong's Concordance, you know, there's really nowhere where Jesus, he, he, he kind of alluded to it, almost said it, but there's no verse where Jesus said, by the way, I want to tell everybody I am the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He never announced himself that way. But at least, I think, 81 times in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus called himself the Son of Man. He'd always say the Son of Man, the Son of Man, the Son of Man. Because he was emphasizing that everything he did was by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. When, he, mm -hmm. when John the Baptist baptized him, he came up out of the water, the Spirit of God came on him. That's when God anointed him. That's when his ministry started. That's when the miracle started. So Jesus did everything as a man anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. Mm -hmm. And he did that. The reason he did that, because remember John 14, 12 through 14, he told you and me that those who believe on him will do the same works he did in greater works. Mm -hmm. And if he did one of those works because he was God, then what he told us we could do, we couldn't do. Because right. see, Jesus knows we're not God. That's right. I know I'm not God, and I know I'll never be God. There, there, nobody else will ever be God. There's one God. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yep. There, there are no other gods. <clears throat> no other gods beside Almighty God. And so Jesus knew that. So if he worked any miracles, so, so think about that. Jesus walked on the water. Yeah. He, he cleansed the lepers. He raised the dead. He cast out demons. He controlled the weather. He multiplied the food. He, he paid his taxes by going fishing. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Fish had the money for his tax. I think that's pretty good. It's a good deal. Pretty good deal. He did all that by he did all that as a man anointed with the Holy Ghost. He did all that to say, you can do the you can do the same things I did. Whether your mind can comprehend that yet or not, that's what he said. He said, Well, see, he not only said, Well, do the works he did. I mean, that would have been enough for me. Just to do the works he did. Yeah. Yeah. But he said, You're gonna do greater works than I did. Now, the work, saying, telling us we're going to do the works he did is awesome in itself. You, you have to you just sit there and think, wow, really? That's, that's spectacular and when you think about what he did. But then he said, and you're going to do greater work. Well, he, done, he went way out there. I mean, he's, you know, he, he's really got us thinking now, even greater works. Well, if you got to be God to do any of that, we had never qualified. He, of course, knows that. He wouldn't have told us that. Or we would have said, Lord... I, it sounds really neat what you said, but, you know, I can't do that because I'm not God. He would say, you don't have to be God to do, right, to do the right, works right. of God. Now, I always thought, that's really neat. You don't have to be God to do the works of God. Mm -hmm. Now, by myself, like I tell people, I couldn't heal a sick gnat. Y'all yeah. know what gnats are? Yes. I couldn't heal a sick gnat. I can't do anything by myself. I have no supernatural abilities or power or anything without, neither do you. We're nothing without Jesus, Amen. but we're not without him. Yes. We're in him, he's in us. Yes. But through our union with Jesus, through the, it's through the anointing of the Holy Ghost and power we're anointed with, we can do all things. So I bring out the point that Jesus, through his whole earthly ministry, he depended 100% upon 
the Holy Ghost, upon the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the power he was anointed with. Amen. And then when I teach on the book of Acts, I bring that point out that, that the, the disciples or the believers in the book of Acts, they operate just like Jesus did. They depended totally on the Spirit of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit is everything in our life. That's why Jesus said he is our comforter. Yes. He's our helper. So I, I want to just, just remind you just real quickly of the fourfold ministry, first of all, of the Holy Spirit. You ready for this? Yeah. Sure. The fourfold ministry of the Holy Spirit. Are you in John 14? Yeah. Yep. All right, look at verse 26. This is in red in my Bible. Jesus said this. He said, But the Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Now, he sent him. Remember, he came on the day of Pentecost, didn't he? Right. Here's what he'll do. He, he, now, he's talking. this is talking to us believers. He shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So the first two things, uh, the, the first two uh, areas of the full four ministry of the Holy Spirit to the church. See, he has a threefold ministry to the world of unbelievers. Well, I, I don't have time to get into that. This is the full four, full four, full fourfold ministry of the Holy Spirit to the church. So the first thing, uh, like Jesus said, he'll teach you all things. So he's our teacher, isn't he? Yeah. He'll teach us all things. The second thing is that it says he'll bring all things back to our remembrance that Jesus said. Well, that's good. Yeah. I, I want to remember everything Jesus said in the four Gospels, don't you? Don't you? Yes. Plus, you can also use that, that he'll bring everything back to your remembrance you need to remember. You know, Lord, what did I do with my keys? Yeah. You know, whatever you need to remember. So, first of all, he'll teach us all things, and he'll bring all things back to our remembrance, the Lord Jesus said, and anything we need to remember. Then let's look at uh, points, points three and four. Turn over to chapter 16, John chapter 16. This is just my launching pad here. John chapter 16, look at verse 13. Jesus said this too. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Well, he should since that's his name is the spirit of truth. So this, the third thing is he'll guide us into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. That's the fourth thing he'll do. He will show us of things to come. So a lot of times when I'm talking to the Holy Spirit, and I'll say, dear Holy Spirit, I, you know, I love you and I adore you and I'm so glad you live in me and I'm in you. I'm so glad that, that I am your temple on this earth. And thank you that you, you guide, you teach me all things. Thank you for teaching Lee and me all things. Thank you for, for bringing everything back to our members. The Lord Jesus said everything we need to remember today and every day. And thank you for guiding us into all truth. Thank you for showing us of many more things to come. Amen. Thank you for showing us of things to come that are going to take place on the earth in the future. Thank you for showing us, us more things to come that are going to take place in the church universally. And also thank you for showing Lee and me of many more things to come in our lives. Yes. And, and, and the upcoming days, weeks, and months ahead, where you're leading us, any new decisions you want us to make. Y'all with me? Yes. You need, to, you need to lean on. Jesus did rely, Jesus depended totally on the Holy Spirit. He didn't do anything. Remember, he operated as a, as, as a man. That meant he couldn't do anything that God could do unless he, he, he yielded to the Holy Ghost, right. to, that, to the anointing of the Holy Ghost and power in his life. So, see, I mean, he was limited in that way. He couldn't, he, see, he knew if, if, he, if, he, if he messed up and did one work because he was God, he would have blown the whole thing. Right. So, see, you got to think about Jesus, you know. Try to, try to picture it. Remember, he, he, he was and is almighty God. Amen. Do anything. But the Father, in essence, said, listen, you know, we both know you're God. But when, you, when, I, when, you, when you're birthed on the earth, and, 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 and after John the Baptist baptizes you with the, in, in water, the Spirit of God's going to come on you. And from that point, even though you know you're God, you can't slip up and do something because you're God. You've got to operate as a man. And I kind of like, in my mind, I just like picturing this. Like if, it, It's as if Jesus might have said he wouldn't have done this, but he could have said, well, well, Father, you want me to do the works that we can do, but you want me to do them as a man? You know, a man can't do the works we do. How in the world can I possibly do the works of God if, you don't, if, if you're not going to let me operate as God? That's when the Father would have said, well, I got this plan here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to anoint you. That means I'm going to empower you. I'm going to put something on you and in you. I'm going to anoint you with an anointing that's going to, through this anointing I'm going to anoint you with, 
As long as you rely on this anointing and flow in this anointing, always yield to, the, to this anointing that I'm going to put on you, you'll be able to do. Through this anointing, this anointing will enable you as a human being, as a mere man, to be able to do the works that we can do as God. Mm -hmm. And you won't have to do anything because you're God. And that anointing is called the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit and power. Right. And I'm going to do this because after you get done with your earthly ministry, you're going to, I'm going to have you tell all those that are going to get saved after your death and resurrection that they can do the same works you did, Amen. plus greater works. And, of course, they're going to be thinking, yeah, but we're not God. And so I, I want them to know you didn't do anything because you were God. You did everything because of the anointing you're anointed with. Because, see, after they're born again and baptized with the Holy Ghost, I'm going to anoint them with the same anointing. Yes. And, but, and they're still going to be just as human as you were. And they're going to know as a human being they can't do squat by themselves. Right. But they're going to go back and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in my Bible. And they're going to realize that all those great works you did, what you did them as a man like they are, but you, you, you didn't do a thing because you were God. You, did, you, you relied totally on the, on the anointing that I'm going to tell them I'm going to give them the same anointing. Yeah. Now, I get excited about that. Mm -hmm. I don't get up every day and think, well, i got to try my best to be God today. No, I don't ever think that way. All i got to do is be a human being, be a man. I'm real good at being a man. Yeah. You, are you real good at that? I mean, male or female. I'm real good at being a man. Yeah. A human. Right. See, we don't have to study for that, do we? Yeah. All, well, all we need to do, we don't have to get up every day and read books and learn how to be a man almost do <laughs> you do in the world today but we don't have to read books and learn how to be a man all we have to do is think on I just need to learn about the anointing I can't do anything as a man anyway by myself so I don't need to try to think that way I don't need to get frustrated or irritated or worried about that all I need to do God made it very clear I can do that I can do those same works he does that, that he can do is through the anointing that the same anointing, he's anointed me with the same anointing he anointed Jesus with. I want to learn everything I can about that anointing and how to flow in that anointing. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So what I want you to realize is um, when I teach on the anointing, that you need to know as believers, see, this is something you got to really get settled. You need to know as a believer, as a Christian, that you are already anointed. That's right. You're already anointed. You're already anointed. Mm -hmm. Now, I know... You're agreeing with me on that, but let me tell you why that that's not as, um, as, as simple as it sounds. Like you're saying, oh, yeah, we know that. Yeah, but not a lot, of, I would say a lot, maybe most of the church world, do not. they're not convinced that God has already anointed them. And here's why. Because they, they run around, they, you know, they run around for, to meeting, from meeting to meeting. And listen, I'm all for meetings. That's what we do. That's what Lee and I do. We hold me. have been doing this. I've been doing this for 40, over 40 years now. So I'm all for seminars and camp meetings and, and holding services. Praise God. That's what Jesus did. Jesus was an itinerary preacher. He did just like we do. He went from church to church to church for three years. From church to church to church. That's what he did. They called them synagogues then. But he'd go preach in that church. Then he'd go to that church. Then he'd go to that church. And basically, if you, saw, if you met Jesus, you'd say, where are you going next weekend? Yeah. Well, I'm going over here to Nazareth. How about next? I'm going over to Jerusalem. Got a good church over there. I'm going to go. He just went from church to church to church. That, that was what he did. So I'm all for meetings. But there are a lot of Christians today. That the main reason they're going to meetings is because they want to get anointed. I, you know, there's, you know, you know, brother so and so's there, man. He's a powerful man of God or a powerful woman of God. I'm hoping if I uh, hope they'll lay hands on me and get me anointed. I want to get anointed. I want to get anointed. I want to get anointed. And you, and, and, and you need to, the reason you need to know you're already anointed, because see, until you're all convinced you're already anointed, you won't be uh, excited about doing anything for God because you don't think you're qualified to go do anything yet. Right. See, you've got to be convinced that you have something. You've got you to gotta be convinced you're already anointed. As long as you don't, you're not 100% convinced you're already anointed, God's already equipped you, then you're going to, all the time you could be witnessing to people and, 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 and doing the works Jesus did in greater works, you're busy trying to get anointed. Your mind's, I got to get anointed first. I got to get anointed first. I got to have something. I don't have a supply to give. I got to get my supply. I got to get anointed. I see this is going to lead right into bring your supply. Yeah. You're not going to bring your supply if you don't know you got a supply. Right. Yeah. Right. You got to be convinced you got a supply. You got something to bring. Very, very important. You have to know you're already anointed. And I know um, one minister, 
but he has a powerful healing ministry, teaching ministry today. Uh, great man of God. And um, but he said uh, back um, when he was very young, uh, he called Teal Osborne. Remember Teal Osborne? I mean, he was like a modern day Philip the Evangelist. Powerful, miraculous man. I mean, powerful man of God. He knew about operating God's power and anointing. And he called he called Teal Osborne's office, which was back then in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he wanted to talk to Brother Osborne. He, you know, he really didn't think he probably would. But um, I think the secretary answered. And he, he just kind of sheepishly said, you know, could I speak to Teal Osborne? And she said, okay. <laughs> and, and put him on the phone. And, of course, that surprised him. And he said, um, uh, Brother Osborne, you know, I just want to, I just need you to, I need to find out where you're going to be in a meeting or so because, you know, I, I just need you to lay hands on me, you know, so I'll be anointed. I want the anointing you have I just so I'll be anointed. See, we've been trained that way. Yeah. See, and there is a, there is a such thing, and I'm going to get into this too, it's impartation too. Mm. But there's a, there's a wrong side of it too. Right. And I'm talking about the wrong side here. And um, he said, I just, I need you to lay hands on me so I'll be anointed so I can go out and, you know, start obeying the Great Commission. And just right on the phone, Till Osborne said, you don't need me to lay hands on you, son. You got Jesus in you, don't you? Amen. He said, well, yeah. He said, you're qualified. <laughs> get out and start doing what God told you to do. You're already anointed. Now, you're amen to me, but a lot, of tr a lot of Christians today, they don't think that way. No. Right. No. I'm just hoping that that guest speaker will lay hands on me so I'll get anointed. You're already anointed. You're already anointed. Right. Now, here's how you know you're already anointed. If you're born again, if you're born again, the word anoint means to, uh, to rub on and to smear. Yeah. But it also means to consecrate to an office. Yeah. You, we don't hear a lot of talk on that. See, as soon as, as soon as you and I confess Jesus as Lord, to be born again, especially for those watching on the, the Internet, to be born again, all you have to do is simply believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess him as your Lord. Amen. Just ask Jesus into your heart and, 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 and say, I believe in you. I believe God raised you from the dead, and I confess you're now my Lord. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Yeah. You'll do that and mean it from your heart. No, you're not mouthing words. You've you got to believe it. But when you really believe that and say that, then you're born again. You just came into the kingdom. Now, right then, even before you're baptized with the Holy Ghost and the power of God and you speak in tongues, you're anointed right then. You're anointed with that, that with, with, you can say, half the definition, which is consecration to an office. You just, God just anointed you. God just put you into a spiritual office. You're now a son of God. Amen. You're now in the kingdom of God. Come on. You're already anointed right there. Yes. You know, over in Samuel, it talks about how Samuel... Uh, found Saul, and it says he anointed him with oil to be king. Remember that? Mm -hmm. So Samuel anointed Saul. That was a God thing. So, so, so Saul was anointed, the Bible says. But when you read Saul's life, he never worked any miracles at all. See, the anointing doesn't just mean power. The Bible says Saul was anointed, but he never did. He never worked any miracles at all. One time he prophesied because he got around a bunch of prophets, remember? Mm -hmm. And, that, that, and, and that, that, that spirit of prophecy got on him, and he started prophesying. But other than that, we have no miracles. He wasn't like Elijah or Elisha. So the anointing isn't just about power. The first thing is about consecration. So as soon as a person gets born again, you, they're, they're anointed. They're consecrated. They're set apart into, into, the, into the spiritual office and, and position of sonship. You're a child of God now. Then after that, remember Jesus told his disciples, after they were born again, he said, don't, don't go do anything yet. Don't go obey the Great Commission yet. Go to Jerusalem because yeah. you need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and power. See, that's the other part of that anointing. You know, if, if Lee and I were at the beach and uh, she could, we could be at the beach on a nice sunny hot day and she could hand me a bottle of suntan lotion and say, would you anoint me with some suntan lotion? <laughs> See, as Christians, we don't think, that, we don't think it that way because that word anoint just means power to us. It means something supernatural. Anoint just means to rub on and to smear. Yeah. So she can say, would you anoint me with suntan lotion? Mm -hmm. That means would you rub this and smear the suntan lotion on my back? Mm -hmm. Now, after she gets anointed with suntan lotion, that doesn't mean she's going to be able to really flow in the gifts now no. and going to see healings and miracles and signs and wonders. No. That's why when people say they're anointed, you need to ask the question, with what? <laughs> oh, he's really anointed. Okay, with what? See, we just assume... When somebody says they're anointed, that means they just, they got the power of God. Well, they may have just suntan lotion on their back. Right. You need to ask, what are they anointed with? Acts 10.38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
finish that for me. With the Holy Spirit and power. With the Holy Spirit and power. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. So when you're born again, and then after you're born again, you say, God, please fill me, baptize me with the Holy Ghost and the power of God in Jesus' name, and give me my new language to speak in. We call it tongues. And as soon as you do that, you're now, you're now anointed with the Holy Spirit and power like Jesus was. So once you're born again and you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, you are fully anointed right then. Did you hear that? Amen. You need to know this now because you, you cannot, you'll never get more anointed than that. Right. right. No matter how many great men and women of God you have lay, that lay hands on, you won't get more anointed than that. Now, let me explain this. The anointing can be manifested in different ways. And manifested in different degrees and measures. Or it seems it's the same anointing, though. God can manifest that same anointing as healing power in your hands, you know, all kinds of different ways. But it's all coming from the, that anointing, the anointing that Jesus was anointed with. See, when Jesus was anointed after he came up out of the water, he had everything he needed. If you read the four Gospels, you'll never find another place where it says, And Jesus went up into the mountain. The Father told him to go up on the mountain because he had to. Um, had to give him more anointing. Didn't have quite enough. Right. He had all he needed. If you read the, the epistles, those are the letters written to the church, Romans through the book of Jude. You'll not find one place where Paul or Peter or James or John, any of the authors, you'll not find any scriptures where, where like Paul said, you know, I'm, I'm having an anointing service next week and we're just believing God to get God's people anointed more than they already are, you know, for, for or what we call a fresh anointing. A new anointing. Yeah. See, we got we got to watch a lot, a lot of these things that we do. The the church does a lot of stuff that's um, I call it spinning their wheels. You're doing stuff you don't need to do. Like Till Osborne said, you don't need me to lay hands on you. You got Jesus in you, don't you? Amen. See, he recognized if you got Jesus, you got everything. Get going. See, once you step out, it's about getting that, stepping out in faith, right. bringing your supply. Once you decide, I'm going to go out and expect God to use me, then you'll see that anointing will start flowing. You're like, oh, I am anointed. Mm -hmm. But really what it boils down to is a lot of Christians, they're waiting on a feeling. Mm -hmm. How will you know when you're anointed? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, go ahead and say it. Well, I feel something mm -hmm. special that lets me know I'm anointed. I really felt that when he laid hands on me, so I know I'm anointed. That anointing has nothing to do with feelings. That's right. It flows by faith. Amen. So we need to know that we're already anointed. So let me give you a couple scriptures on that you, that will really help you. Again, remember Paul said out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Yes. I'm going to give you at least, at least two or three. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. These are ones I stand on. So you keep meditating these verses I'm going to give you and studying them. Your faith will get stronger and stronger in this. That's why if um, you know if I'm in a service and the guest speaker says, "I just want everybody to come up because we, you know what, uh, I want to lay hands on everybody for God to anoint you," well, I won't be going up. I'll, I'll be sitting there to myself saying, "I'm already anointed." Now, if he says, "I want to lay hands on you," um, because I believe there are things that God may want to impart to you Amen. that you haven't experienced yet. Well, yeah, I could, I, I'll come up for that. Yeah, I haven't experienced everything, but I don't ever. I, I know I'm already anointed. I know I'm already anointed. I know I already got Jesus in me. I mean, I would if he said, "I, I want to lay hands on everybody so you get Jesus in you." Are you going up for that? No, because no, I, I know I got Jesus. See, I know I got Jesus. Or I want to lay hands on you for the anointing you already have for God to to manifest that stronger through you. That's okay. You see, you got you got to decide. No, I just don't run up for any altar calls, mm -hmm. just because a lot of preachers just try to they they're just trying to hype things up a lot of times. Yeah. They want to be able to say, "Hey, we had 400 people came to the altar." Yeah, preachers like to say that. They could come to the altar and have cheeseburgers. <laughs> but they but they want to say we had. By the way, we had 400 people. The whole church came up to the altar. Well, what did they come up for? They, none of them may have even needed to come up. Praise God. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 1, look at verse um, 21. Now remember, Paul is talking to all Christians. This is an epistle. 
He said, now he which establishes us with you in Christ. Are you in Christ? Yeah. There you go. And hath anointed us is God. And hath anointed. What tense is that in? Past. Sounds like the past, doesn't it? So, so the Holy Ghost through Paul talking to all believers, to you, me, all, all, all of us in the church, he said that God has established us in Christ. And God, see, I, I didn't anoint you. You didn't anoint me. God Almighty has hath anointed. That's He has already anointed us. So if that's true again, remember we talked about, you know, Jesus said, John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. Yeah. And you're one of his sheep. Yeah. Well, if Jesus really can't lie and he just said, all my sheep hear my voice, then you need to quit saying I don't hear his voice because you're calling Jesus a liar because he said you do. You need to get in agreement with Jesus and say, I do hear your voice. Well, this is another place right here. God wrote this through the Holy, through the Apostle Paul. God can't lie. And he's talking to you and me and every believer. And he says that you are established in Christ, and I have already anointed you. Amen. I'm not going to one of these days. If you fast long enough, get a degree in theology, become spiritual enough, get enough well-known ministers to lay hands on you, one of these days, hopefully before the rapture, you'll get anointed. Yeah. No, he didn't say that. God said, I have already anointed you. Now, here's what I do. I say, yes, sir. You can't lie. I was going to go try to get that well-known minister to lay hands on me so I get anointed, but it looks like I don't need to anymore. Right. I mean, how am I going to get any more anointed than God anointing me? Right. Amen. God said he's already anointed me. Wow. Okay, that's done. But see, a lot of Christians, they won't take it that simple. Right. They, they need the, you know, God to blow the roof off the building or three <laughs> angels to come down. They got to see a lightning strike. They, again, they got to, I, I got to feel some goosebumps or something, you know. You yeah. just ask me just to take God at his word and just act, act like he didn't lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. He didn't lie. He tells the truth. Right. Let's just believe what he says. Right. Yeah. When he says, by Jesus Christ, you're healed. Say, yes, sir. I believe that. Whether I feel that way or not, I say I'm healed. I'm going to keep saying I'm healed until I feel that way. Yeah, That's the way it works. I see God says he's already anointed me, therefore I'm already anointed. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm so glad to be anointed. And I know from Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, when you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, you'll receive power to be a witness, therefore I'm anointed with the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Amen. I'm anointed and, and for the office I'm in, which is sonship in Christ, and I'm anointed with, with the Spirit of God and the power of God like Jesus was. Wow, I'm all set. I'm ready to roll. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ready to go. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. I mean, think about that. You know, in Luke 49, in, uh, in, Luke, uh, in Luke 24, verse 49, that's where Jesus, after he rose from the dead, he breathed on the disciples. And um, I believe that's when they got born again. Remember, to be born again, you believe Jesus died and arose from the dead. Well, when you're standing there talking to the risen Christ, I can't believe you've got to wait 10 more days to get saved. It's a member getting saved is a hard thing. I believe that's when they got got actually got born again, and uh, and then but yet Jesus, remember Jesus gave the great commission in Mark sixteen, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and these signs and miracles will fo follow those that believe. It's like Jesus said, okay, boys, you're born again, you're 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 anointed for that area of consecration. You're you're sons of God now. You're in the kingdom now, but you need to be anointed with the Spirit and power like I was. So even Jesus let them know, you can't go do anything yet until you got to wait for the day of Pentecost. Now, once, once you're baptized with the same spirit you're born of, once you're baptized with the Holy Ghost and the power of God, then, then you got, you're fully anointed. Jesus never said anything about now. After that happens, you know, periodically you need to find some, some, some ministers that I use in a great way and have them lay hands on you so you'll, so you'll keep being anointed. No, Jesus never said that. It's like Jesus said, once you're born again and you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, go and keep on going until the rapture comes. You're set. You don't need to stop for anything. When another believer comes back, comes to you and says, well, you know, let, let's go over this service because I believe you can get more anointed over there. There's a, this guy's really anointed. If you, he, like, you'll be, how can I get more anointed than God anointing me? I'm already anointed. Amen. Praise God. I'm already anointed. Now, let me give you another one to go along with that. Turn over to 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. This is a humdinger over here, stem winder. 1 John chapter 2. I, I, I stand on this verse a lot. Verse 20. 
God's talking to all believers again through the Apostle John. He said, but you have an unction. In King James, it's unction. In New King James, it's anointing. But you have an unction or you have. Then say you will have one of these days again if you become spiritual enough, you fast long enough. You have an unction, an anointing from the Holy One. You already have an anointing. You see that? I already have an anointing. I already have an unction from the Holy One in me. But here's, here's one of the benefits of that unction, that anointing. God said that you know all things. You know all things. You can, I could preach on that for a, a good while. We, you know all things that, through that anointing. I have an anointing from the Holy One. So with 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, 1 John 2, 20, those two verses tell me that I'm already anointed. And you can top it off by jumping down to verse 27. Add this to those two. But the anointing which you have received. What tense is that in? Sounds like past again. But the anointing which you have received. Yeah, but I, didn't, I don't feel anything. Well, that had nothing to do with anything. But the anointing which you have received of God abides in you. I like that. that we're not carrying this anointing around in a, brief, in a briefcase, you know. And hope we don't lose our briefcase. No, this anointing abides. Say the anointing abides. The anointing abides. Say I'm already anointed. I'm already anointed. Say I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. And I'm baptized with the Holy Ghost. And, and therefore I'm already anointed. I'm already with the Holy anointed. Spirit the Holy and the power of God. Amen. And that anointing Amen. abides in me. Amen. And through that anointing, through that anointing I, know all things. I know all things. So it says, but you, ha you have an anointing that you have received that abides in you. And you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Wow. Yeah. So here's what I do, as I've, I've said this before probably here, that, you know, over in James chapter 1, it says, if you lack wisdom, ask of God wisdom. Mm -hmm. And that's true. God's given us all kinds of different ways that we can release our faith to receive from him, different ways to receive healing, you know. Just stand on the word yourself. You can be anointed with oil. You can pray for somebody else for their healing, receive healing for you. All kinds of God. God wants us. To, to be to experience his blessings and this total freedom in our lives so yes nothing wrong with saying god please you know give me wisdom in this matter but i believe uh, um, uh, the higher form see i heard one minister bring out the point that the book of james was probably written mainly to baby christians so the book of james was mainly to baby christians and just by when you read what, what the way he talks in there about calling them adulterers and adulteresses and they're, they're friends of the world. It sounds like Christ, but Christians that are still, uh, they're still straight, they're still going back into the world thing, worldly things. They're not mature yet. And, uh, but to me, the, the real, the real uh, height of your faith is, is 1 John 2.20. When you, when you really believe what God said, through God, through his anointing, through the unction of the Holy One abiding in me, I know all things. So here's what I do. I get up, and I'll get up, you know, in the morning. A lot of times I'll say, God, I want to thank you that according to 1 John 2, 20, that you've already anointed me with the Holy Spirit and power. You've already given me your unction from you, the Holy One, and your anointing abides in me. And through that anointing, I know all things. Therefore, I know every decision you want me to make today. I know where you want me to go. I know everything you want me to say and do. I do that all the time for meetings. Before coming here this week, I've been, Lord, I thank you that through your anointing in me, I know all things. Therefore, I know exactly what you want me to teach in all three services at the master's house. I know exactly how you want to minister through me to the people in all three services. I know the direction you want me to go. See, develop your faith in that, that way. Rely, see, Jesus did that all the time. We, you just didn't realize that. He did that all the time. Next time you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, think about Jesus' ministry. You know, I got to thinking about that one day, that there, there was no place like, like we do so much. There was no, there's no scripture in the Gospels, really, where, where a, a, a sick person or somebody came to Jesus that had a need, and Jesus said, um, just, just, uh, can you just, just sit in that chair right there for a minute? I just want to go get with God and, and, and just, just ask the Father to give me a word of knowledge about your situation here. And I just need to go hear from God real quick. You ever see him do that? The God, he never did that. He never had to take a break and go pray for a minute. He never told anybody, let me go fast and pray about your situation real quick. Or just give me a half hour. Go over and get your coffee at Starbucks. And, and just give me a minute just to, just, to, just to pray and talk to the Father a minute. Get, get the mind, get his mind on. He never did that. 
when you study Jesus, every time he ministered to people, it's like he always knew exactly what to do, right? Mm -hmm. You know? I need to make some mud pies and put on this guy's eye. I need to tell him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. I just need to lay hands on this person. It's like he always, he always knew what to do. Now, most, most Christians and ministers today, you know, they'll stop and say, just give me a moment, and they, they just pray about it. And I understand why, because we're, you know, we're not as developed as Jesus was. We're, we're, we're learning. I'm learning. We're all learning. We, you got, like I said, you got to practice. Practice the things of God, the presence of God. But I began to notice that about Jesus. Let me give you an example. Turn over to John chapter 2 with me. Y'all still awake? Yep. Okay. John chapter 2, you know this story about this is the first miracle Jesus did. The first one that he did. You know why? Because God said so. <laughs> That's why. He didn't heal any dead birds when he was 15 years old. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nonsense. That's all fables, Virginia. That's not Bible. Uh, one reason he didn't do it, you know, when Jesus was 15, he was still just as much God as he was when he was 30. That's right. But it wasn't until he was, you know, it wasn't until, until he was uh, about 30 years old when, and John baptized him. Right. See, Jesus didn't start working any miracles because, until he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. He's, he was God the whole time. He's God when he was, you know, six weeks old. He didn't work any miracles. And he didn't work any miracles till the anointing of the Holy Ghost came upon him. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Now, in, action, in John chapter 2, you know the story. It says, on the third day there was a marriage in Cain of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus, now listen closely, follow this now. When they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they don't have any wine. And we know that meant you need to do something about that. They don't have any wine. And listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said to her, woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. In other words, it's not time for me to start working miracles. In other words, according to the, remember Jesus, remember Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father do. I only say what I hear the Father say. He only did the Father's will. So he wouldn't say or do anything unless he knew the Father God was directing him to do that, right? So in essence, you know, he, he knew at this time, right, this very moment, I'm not supposed to start working any miracles yet for some reason because the Father hasn't directed me yet. But yet his mother said, basically, we need, I need you to work a miracle here because we need some wine. Now watch what happens. So uh, he said, uh, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour has not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, she didn't pay a bit attention to that, did she? No. <laughs> she, yeah. she didn't say, oh, I didn't know that. Um, it will, will your time come like in three hours? Or is it, you know, do we wait till Thursday? Or, you know, she didn't even comment on what he said. She immediately turned to the, she said to the servants, whatever he says unto you, do it. And then look at verse six then. And there was set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, I thought he just said up in verse, he's, he's, going to sell, he, he's going to say unto them, go fill that up with water and take it to the, to the head of the, 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 the deal, the party, you know, take it to him. Yeah, but he just said in verse 4, the Father let, has told me not to do anything yet. But now all of a sudden it's okay to do something. And it did say that, you know, when, when his mother said, you know, uh, when, when, when his mother said, we need more wine, it, it didn't say Jesus said, well, Mom, um, hang on, let me, is there a little room around here I can go to just for a couple minutes? <laughs> just let me talk to the Lord. He did have to have a break to go pray and say, God, I just need your mind. Uh, I don't know what to do. See, Jesus was, in, he, Jesus knew through the anointing abiding in me, I know all things. That meant, I already know. And, and I want you to see how fast God can, can, can speak to you and change something. His mother said, we, we, don't, we need more wine. Jesus said, it's not time for me to do anything like that. And obviously, as soon, so you got to think about Jesus. As soon as, as soon as Jesus said, it's not time for me to do that, his, mo his mother immediately said, hey, go, go, whatever he tells you to do, do it. He, she just proceeds as if, 
you know, she just ignored what he said, but it's not time for me to do that. Well, immediately, I believe, because remember, he wouldn't do anything unless the father told him to do it. See, he's not going to disobey the father. So the very fact that he just said, it's not time for me to do that, then he went ahead and did it, meant right in that split second, he knew it's okay. For some reason, God, the father let him know, it's okay, go ahead and do it. Or he wouldn't have done it, you know that. You know he wouldn't have done it unless the father let him know. Well, how did he know so fast? Through the anointing. That's what I'm saying. That's what that verse means in 1 John 2, 20. I have an unction, an anointing from the Holy One in me. Through that anointing, I know all things. So wherever you go, if you're at work today or tomorrow, and, um, you know, somebody calls you, and uh, or, or the boss comes in and says, hey, I, you never told me. I, I need a decision on this matter. Especially if you do have a couple of, a couple of minutes. You know, if he says if he says that, walks out of the room right then, say, uh, Father, I want to thank you that through your anointing in me, I know everything. I know all things. Therefore, I know what decision to make on this. And I just thank you for that. Amen. Just believe that, that, to, to hear what God wants you to do right then. See, God wants to train us to where we get as proficient as Jesus did in his ministry. Mm -hmm. Everywhere he went, he never had to stop and find a closet to pray for a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. He got words of knowledge all the time. See, the gifts flow through him just, just so, so supernaturally, it seemed almost natural. I just want you to see how, how fast he, he got a word from the Father here. He didn't have to go kneel somewhere. He didn't have to get Peter to agree with him in prayer for five. He didn't have to do a thing. Just that fast, he went from, no, it went from telling his own mother, I can't do anything yet, to, okay, I can. Well, what happened? I just heard from the Father, that anointing in me. Through that anointing, I know all things. Well, this is more exciting than I, I think, than I think maybe some of y'all think, but. <laughs> it's very good. Praise God. Yeah. I mean, I, I depend, Jesus, that's what Jesus depended on all the time. It was the anointing flowing through. He depended on that, and that's how he lived all the time. I have an anointing in me, and through that anointing, I know all things. I know all things. I know all things. I, I, I mean, every I know all things. I know what to do. I mean, start start practicing that now. Mm -hmm. When it, when you got to make a decision, so I have an unction abiding in me. I have an anointing abiding in me. In other words, I depend on the Holy Spirit for everything. I don't depend on me by myself. We got to learn to depend on the Holy Spirit just as much as the Lord Jesus did. He totally depended on the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the power of God He was anointed with. Because through that anointing, we can do all things. So why wouldn't we want to depend on that? Praise God. Now, if you would, I want you to go over. I want to show you a couple of things over here. And I want to, just real quickly, I want to read just, let's just read through a couple of scriptures real quickly because I want to just show you a couple, just uh, some places about, about impartation, about, the, how, about bringing your supply, about the anointing flowing through us to bless other people. Uh, turn over to Romans chapter 1. Let, let's look at this real quickly. Romans chapter 1. I just want you to see where some of these are in your Bible. So, so that you think this way. Romans chapter 1. Paul is talking to the Christians at Rome. And um, he says, For I long, verse 11, For he says, For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end you may be established. That I may impart, I believe the gift he's talking about is not one of the gifts of the Spirit. You're not established through the gifts of the Spirit. But you are through the ministry gifts. I believe he's talking about I, that God was telling him, I'm, when I get to, God's going to use me in, in imparting unto you a pastor for the church there. But he said, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That I may impart unto you. Notice, that I may impart unto you. So, see, that's part of bringing our supply. Really, once you know that you're anointed, then that anointing can be imparted out of you to do things for people. Heal them, deliver them. In this case, to, 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 help, to help raise up a pastor for the church at Rome. That anointing, you need to think about that. So another thing I do when I'm confessing, you know, through God's anointing, I know all things. I'm always saying, Lord, thank you that through that anointing, I know all things. And therefore, I know every decision you want me to make today. I know where you want me to go. I know what you want me to say and do. But also thank you that through that, that anointing of the Holy Ghost and power that I'm anointed with is always flowing out of me. I always say it's always flowing out of me like mighty rivers into every area of my life in greater manifestation every day. And I, this, this is the way I think. Even while I'm asleep at night, it's flowing into every area of my life 
just saturating me in greater manifestation while I'm while I'm while I sleep at night. That's the way I think about it. That's the way I talk talk to myself. But that anointing is always flowing out of me into others everywhere I go, imparting into them whatever they need from God, healing, deliverance, miracles, wisdom, whatever they need. And this is a good verse for that. Now, if you would turn over to um, turn over to uh, let's see, let's don't go too far. Let's go over to um, First Peter chapter four. Turn over there real quick. First Peter chapter four. Don't want to go too much longer because I want y'all to come back tonight. <laughs> Don't want to make you mad here. First Peter chapter four. Look what Peter said over here, in chapter four, verses uh, ten and eleven. Now remember, when he, he says, as every man hath received the gift, he's talking about every man and woman, every born-again person. As every man hath received the gift. Now I notice tenses there. See, when I read that, I don't say, well, God, I just hope you'll give me the gift. Yeah. He didn't say, as every man will receive the gift one of these days if you pray hard. No, you've already received. As every man hath received the gift. Now, say, what gift? Well, we, it doesn't actually say what gift. There's no scripture that says the gift he's talking about is this gift. Could be the gift of, that usually, now the, uh, you may not have thought about, about this before, but you, usually when, you, when, when the word gift is mentioned, it's talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit mainly. Within the Holy Spirit are the nine gifts of the Spirit and all of the gifts. But he could be called talk about a different gift here. But definitely, as every man has received the gift, so minister the same. Minister the Holy Spirit. Minister the gift and all that came with the Holy Spirit minister those things to others. Even so, minister the same one to another. Doesn't that sound like bringing a supply? Mm -hmm. Minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God gives. In other words, we don't do it out of our natural ability. Right. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Wow, praise God. Now, I want you to turn over to Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. This is a real good verse over here. Philippians chapter 1. And I want you to look at um, something Paul said. It's believed that Paul, um, of course, when he wrote the book of Philippians, he was, he was in prison when he wrote this book, so he was in jail. And in Philippians chapter 1, remember he's talking to the believers at Philippi. Look at verse 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Another way to say that is I know this will turn to my salvation through your prayer and your supply. So I want to emphasize that word supply. Paul was saying, I know that this is going to wind up in my deliverance through your prayer and your supply of the Spirit. In other words, he's letting the, the Christians at Philippi know, you have a supply to bring. You have, you, you have a supply of the Spirit of God that you can bring, actually, to help me in my situation, to help Amen. the great Apostle Paul, if you'll learn how to bring your supply. See, we've got to learn how to bring our supply. Yeah. But see, you won't, won't even, you won't even desire to bring your supply or get excited about what I just said until you're convinced that you have a supply, that yeah. you're already anointed. Yeah. See, when you really, when you have no doubt about it, when you know, I know I'm anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, I have no doubt about it. And then when I say, now you need to bring that supply and let it fly to you to others. Okay, I'm ready. But you'll never, you'll never be, you'll never say, okay, I'm ready until you're totally convinced you got something. Right. Right. I'm not going to be excited about going and uh, helping somebody build a deck on their house. If I'm not convinced, I know how to build decks. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't know how to build a deck, I may think, man, I would love for them to have a beautiful deck on their house. And well, come, 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 supply your your abilities and help us build it. I I don't have that to supply. Right. Now, if I knew I had that to supply, well, that's a different story, isn't it? I say, okay, now I can fulfill my desire to help you with your deck. So that's why you got to get really confident that you're all you're already equipped, you're already qualified. God's already ordained you. You're already anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. You already have a you already have a supply. Now the next step is we need to start bringing our supply. Yep. 
It, we're done trying to get the supply. We don't go to meetings to get the supply. We already got the supply. We're, uh, our attitude now, is, as the church should be, we got to bring our supply. If you notice here in this verse, Paul said, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and your supply of the Spirit. He didn't say, I know this will turn to my salvation. Once y'all get a supply you can bring to help me out. I know you guys just don't have a supply yet, but, but if you go to enough meetings, get enough ministers that are on television, they've got to be on television, <laughs> enough that are on television to lay hands on you, then you, you may get enough supply to help me out. No, he, no. He, he, he assumed they already had a supply. Already had a supply. Through your prayer and your supply of the Spirit. Now, go over to Ephesians chapter 4. Let me show you how, well, I mentioned this last night, how that bringing our supply, that to me, I believe that is the number, probably the number one way to experience numerical church growth in our local churches. It's not by, it's not by more, uh, you know, uh, um, programs. It's about every believer in the church bringing their supply. Mm -hmm. So over in Ephesians chapter 4, look at verse, um, well, let's, let's, let's read verse 15 first. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto, into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together. Now remember, remember Paul's teaching on the body over in 1 Corinthians chapter 12? Remember, we're all one body, but we're made up of many parts, right? You know, I may be the right knee, and you may be the left toe in the body of Christ. See, we don't know what part we are unless God were to tell us for some reason, but Jesus is the head. But we're all members of one body. So he said, from whom the whole body fitly joined, say joined, joined. together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. Yep. Y'all listen to this? Yes. From whom the whole body fitly joined... So that there's one body, the body of Christ. We're all members of that body. As members, we're all joined. Amen. We're joined together in this one body, right? We're joined together in this one body. And then he said, by which every joint, so that means you're a joint. Mm -hmm. A member, a joint in the body, right? We're all joined together, so we're joints in the body. I don't mean a joint you smoke. I'm talking about a <laughs> joint in the body. We're joints yeah. in the body of Christ. Amen. But he said, by that which every joint supplieth. Well, that means every joint. That's every member, which means that's every Christian, right? Yep. In every denomination around the world, in every nation, every joint supplieth. So every joint is supposed to be supplying something, right? Amen. He didn't just say, he didn't just say uh, only those that are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers there, did he? Every yep. joint supplieth. Amen. So God is letting us know right now that we're all joints in the body. We're all members or joints. Another word for members is joints. We're all joints in Christ's body. And God said as a joint, we're supposed to bring our supply. So that lets me know that every joint has a supply. Every believer has a supply. Yep. Well, I don't think I do. Well, the, you do whether you think you do or not. God says you do. Mm -hmm. See, we're going to get back to the integrity of God's word again. Mm -hmm. If God says you're a joint, you're a joint. That's right. Doesn't matter what you think or what I think. If God says you have a supply, you have a supply. Mm -hmm. yes. All you need to do is agree with God mm -hmm. and say, okay, God, since you said I'm a joint, I'm a joint. Mm -hmm. You said I have a supply. I don't think I do, but since you said I do, you know more than I do. I'm going to agree with you, and I'm going to declare I have a supply. Amen. Now, once you get past that, the next step is now I need to learn how to bring my supply. Right. So he said, which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, Every part, that's getting, that's, again, that's a reminder. It's about every believer again. Ma look what happens. When every joint, every part brings their supply, maketh increase of the body. That's growth. Yep. That increase. Maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So really what that's saying is true numerical growth and spiritual growth in the, in the church is when every joint... Every believer brings their supply. Right. Yeah. When we start bringing our supply. Not about programs. When, when the only one bringing their supply is the pastor, and all the other joints are just there like a football game just to be entertained by what's happening on the, behind the pulpit. But we got, you know, 35 programs. that You know, you may get some people in because of the programs, 
But the growth, you still don't have spiritual growth there. Right. A lot of these churches that they may have 10,000 members. They have all kinds of great programs and things. But a lot, a lot of them are a bunch of, they're a bunch of spiritual babies in the church because mm -hmm. they're not teaching the word. That's right. I like something. I think it was Pastor, uh, Brother Andrew Womack said, I think I got that. He, he was talking to one ministry. He said, if you let me come pastor your 10,000 member church for three months, I'll get it down to 1,000 people for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get out the, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get some word in that church. You'll start losing people when you start teaching God's word. Because they don't want to hear the word. They just want to be entertained. I, we just got to have great music. It's like a Broadway show. A lot of, a lot of Christians treat a lot of churches like a Broadway show. We got to have great music, you know. Nothing wrong with dressing nice, but you got to dress to the hilt, you know. And you got to—it's all about all the colors and all the wonderful clothes everybody's wearing and all the programs. It's almost like a, a, a Christian Broadway show, mm -hmm. and 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 then they have the great music, and then the, the so-called pastor gets up and he talks about basically how you know we need. He mainly talks about politics and how we need to, you know. And, and we need to definitely stand up for good things. It's more of a humanitarian message. It's not the word. See, there's things we got to address in, in the local churches, of course, about politics. But number one, Jesus said you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Yeah. We got to get back to the word. And see, when you get back to the word, that's why you start losing people because they don't. You find out who really wants to grow spiritually, or who's just there for the entertainment. And they're just there so they can put on their resume they attend a church. We got quiet right there. <laughs> That's but good. True church growth comes when every believer brings their supply. Let me give you one more verse to go along with that verse, and I'll, I'll, I'll close this. Colossians chapter 2. This goes right along what we just read in Ephesians, but just in a, in a different letter, still from the, by the Holy Ghost of the Apostle Paul here. But he said the same thing over here. Look at verse 19, Colossians 2, 19. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints. There's another, another verse in a different book uses the same word, that word joint again. By joints and bands, having nourishment minister and knit together increases with the increase of God. So true, true church growth, true church increase comes when every joint, when every member of the body starts bringing their supply. Well, how do you bring your supply? Well, one way to bring your supply uh, of course is well let me I better give you one more turn over to 1 Corinthians 14 real quick you got to have this first 1 Corinthians 14 remember that Corinthian church we talked about mm -hmm. remember they flowed in the gifts all the time and, and so Paul did not discourage them at all from flowing the gifts but Paul simply he, he encouraged them to keep flowing even more but you need to do everything decently in order and, but look at verse, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26. This is a good verse. He's talking to these Christians at Corinth, all these joints. And he says, how is it then, brethren, that means sister and two, how is it then, brethren, when you come together, when you come together, say when you come together. When you come together. Not after you've been together for an hour. When you come together. That means as soon as you, as soon as you come into the church service. When you come together, every one of you, say every one. Every one. Remember, every joint has a supply. Mm -hmm. When you come together, every one of you has a psalm, has a doctrine, that means a teaching, has a tongue. That means a message in tongues. I don't mean a tongue in your mouth. Has a message in tongues. Has a revelation. Has an interpretation for a tongue. Maybe yours or somebody else. In other words, he was letting them, then he said, let all things be done unto edifying. But... He, he, he was letting them, he was telling us that when these believers came to church, talking about bringing your supply. See, a lot of times Christians have the attitude, well, you know, when I get to church, I'll start seeking God about, you know, what my supply is. No, you need to start seeking God before you get to church. Even just for a few minutes, just start praying in tongues for a while. I'll do that. I'll say before I get to church, I'll say, God, I just want to pray in tongues for me and Leah and every believer that will be in the service. I just want, I just pray that as I'm praying in tongues, you'll show us what our supply is that you want us to bring and how you want us to bring it. Now, what that means when I say how you want us to bring it, see, your supply may be, a, God may want you to prophesy, but God's not going to want everybody to prophesy. 
So, so that's why I'm saying how you want me to bring it. See, God, God may show me, you know, he may, he may show me, you know, he may give me a word of knowledge whether there's going to be a person there that, that needs, needs some money. And I want you to give him some money. Well, all I need to do is obey that. Right. Whenever, you know, I need to be looking around and say, okay, God, show me who it is. Yeah. And I just, and when I see him, okay, how much you want me to bless him with? Give him this amount, okay. Then when I do that, I just brought my supply. But now, you may be coming to church and you just sense, I really believe God wants me. God has, I, 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 I believe God has, wants, probably wants me to, I think, give a word of prophecy. And I think it's, 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 it's going to be, you know, in, in, in public, you know. Oh, well, then you need to get ready to do that when you're service. Don't interrupt the service, but just look for the right time and just listen to God and say, God, show me, show me when. When you want me to maybe stand up or however they do it in church. You, know, you got a lot of times you got to find out from the pastors of the churches, like here and everywhere. They have different things. Some pastors, you know, they don't mind, you know, if we're having church service. If it gets quiet for a minute, just anybody in the congregation just starts prophesying. But there are some churches, they have a microphone up front. And you have uh, and you have to come first to the pastor. Say, I believe I have a prophecy or word. Is that okay if I give it? And, and then the pastor may say, well, yes or no. Then you give it on the microphone up front. So you gotta, you got to see what the rules are of every different church. But see, that's part of bringing your, your supply. But the point, the point I wanted you to see here is that these Corinth, the Corinthian church, Paul said, when you come together, you got all these things. Well, where did they get those? You can't say where they got them when they got, when, once, the church, once they had that great praise and worship in the church service. No, it says when you come together, as soon as they came together, they had all this. So when did they get it? Obviously before they came to the church, to the service. Before the service started, they had a tongue, an interpretation of tongue, a prophecy, a revelation, a doctrine, a word of knowledge. Wow. Well, how, where were they getting that? Well, they were praying before they got to, the, got to church. Probably praying in tongues a lot. That's the main way to really flow in the gifts, open up the supernatural realm to you that way. But they were seeking God before the service, saying, God, you know, I know I'm a joint in your body. I'm a member, and I have a supply to bring. And the, the way the way the way the body increases is I need to bring my supply. I'm not gonna think I'm not gonna worry I'm not gonna worry about anybody else. I'm not gonna worry about anything, but I'm not gonna worry about what everybody else's supply is. That's not my business. I need to think about what my my supply is. I want to do my part. Right. So Lord, uh, I just want to pray in tongues for a while. Show me what my supply is. My is my supply just to come to church and to, to just sing the worship songs and, and just to worship you and just to hear the word? If that's it, fine, I'll do that. But if there's something specific I, you want me to do, please show me what that is. Either way, I just want to make sure I, 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 I bring my supply that you want me to bring the way you want me to bring it. Now, if every believer would start practicing that, man, then you'd have those services where so as soon as you get to church, you'd say, wow, it seems like the atmosphere's charged. Right. Yeah. yeah, because everybody's been praying in tongues. Right. We, we don't, we, pastor doesn't have to take 15 minutes and pump everybody up. They're pumped up, spiritually pumped, pumped up. They're on fire. Man, man, they're, they're ready to roll. They're excited. I look forward to bringing my supply. And see, but that supply is everywhere you go. In the restaurants, at McDonald's, on the beaches, in the malls. Always remember, I, I'm a joint in the body. I have, a, I have a supply to bring, a supply of healing, a supply of salvation, a supply of life, and I, and I need to be ready to bring it. Amen. Well, y'all stand up with me. Praise God, praise God. Glory to God. Father, we worship you. Just lift your hands again. Let's worship the Lord. Father, we worship you. We love to worship you and praise you. We just always acknowledge that you're our first love. You're first in our life all the time. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for making us uh, members of Christ's body. We are the body of Christ. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in Christ. All of us are collectively and individually. Thank you that we're joints in the body of Christ. And you've given us a supply. You've already anointed us with the Holy Spirit and the power of God. You've given us a supply to bring. And I pray, Lord, for each one of us that you'll teach and train us more about what that means. Teach and train us like, like, like to operate as, a, as effectively, as uh, proficiently as the Lord Jesus did. And, and, and flowing in the Spirit so quickly just so supernaturally naturally like he did just like breathing lord that he we we you know he would go off and pray all night but but we have no record where anybody came to him and he had to take five minutes and go go to a room and pray about it he always knew he just instantly knew 
It wasn't because he was so smart as a human being. He just knew by your anointing. Teach and train us that way, Lord. Help us to get that proficient, Lord, and flowing in the Spirit and flowing in your anointing that we just, we just know what you want us to say. I know what my supply is. I know what I need to do. I know who you want me to minister to. And, Father, we receive that from you right now. We receive that from you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm excited about this. Yes. I hope you all get excited about it too. Yes. Amen. That we have a supply to bring, praise yes. God. Glory to God. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. There. Pronounce your name again. Machi. Machi. Yeah. Machi. I just the, the Lord was showing me too. You can stay right there. The Lord was showing me too that uh, uh that he's going to, I don't know if you're going to be pastoring a church, but there, there's a, and I don't know what you're doing now, but in the future, and I don't know how long it may be, it could be 10 years from now, you know, it could be next week, but the Lord just, he's just showing me that you're going to be, if you're not pastoring a church, you're going to be really involved in ministry, and really, like like I, I touched on last night, in, in, in teaching and, 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 and ministering to people in your own ministry. In your own ministry and, and things. He just got some great things for you in, in your future. Just got some big things and great things in your future. Amen. So I just believe he just wants to just just put that out to you right now. So so later on, when things come to pass, you'll say, Yeah, God, you told me that. You may say, You told me that six years ago. And now, now I didn't know you're gonna turn me this way or go lead me this direction. Now they've offered me to do this over here in ministry or what. I just, I just believe God wanted me to tell you that. Amen. He's just been speaking to me about that. That he has, he, has, he has much more ministry for you ahead. And again, I, I'm, not, I'm not sensing, um, I don't know if it's pastoring a church, but, uh, but when I say it like that, you know, it, I don't know if it's pastoring a church or being the wife of a pastor of a church or, or whatever, but there's just a lot more ministry that he has for you whole lot more ministry where you're, you'll be operating I believe you're going to be operating in what you would call more full time ministry that he's called you into but you keep doing what you're doing now keep doing what you're doing I heard one prophet say this and I liked it he said um, he said when you get a prophecy from the Lord and I, I don't know which color it was he used colors like red and blue he said God, in, in most prophecies God will tell you what he's going to do and he'll tell you what you need to do and he said, now, just, uh, just imagine that what God's going to do is in blue. If you're writing down the prophecy, everything God said you're going to do, you know, get a blue marker and make that in blue. And everything God told you to do, make that in red. And But the prophet said, what he said, he said, now, I'm telling you this because everything that God wants you to do is in red. Don't go to the blue. Everybody wants to do the blue. Trying to help God along. And I, I, I really like the way he said that. He said, your job is to do the red. Quit trying to do the blue. That's good. God's job is the blue. Amen. Let God do the blue. Yeah. You do the red. So you just, you, you, you read the whole prophecy, but especially you, you, you keep looking at the red. This is my part. You look at, you, you want to look up the blue and say, All right, maybe I can, I can help God a lot. No, you leave God, let God do his blue. He, God has the blue. You got the red. You just do the red. And, let, and God, I guarantee you, God will take care of the blue for you. Amen. God will do his part. Yes. Praise God, he'll bring it to pass. Amen. But I, I'm excited about that. Yep. Really, you pray, keep, yeah, pray in tongues about that. Yeah, Amen. got a good, uh, yeah, good future in the ministry ahead. Amen. Praise God. I I'm, hope it's not too long because I want to hear about it. <laughs> Unless the rapture comes first and you can tell me in heaven. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm excited about that, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Well, lay your hands on your chest like this. And say, my body, my body, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus you've, already you've already been healed by Jesus' stripes. By Jesus stripes. Say, every infection, every infection, say it this way, say, any infection, any, infection, any, disease, germ, any disease germ, disease virus, disease virus. <clears throat> don't slow down your confession, y'all get quiet all the time. Any disease virus, any disease virus, 
Uh, any disease germ? Any, disease any germ. sickness? Any, sickness. any, disease. any disease? Any pain? Any, pain. any plague? Any pain. Trying to come against my body? Trying to attack me? I curse you. Say, I curse you. In Jesus' name. You die right now. And get out of my body. You leave my body now. No plague. No, no, disease, no disease, no sickness no disease. will come near my body near without, my body. Dying. without dying. If it gets close to me, it, it will instantly me. die. It, it cannot die. live in or on my body. I'm healed by Jesus Christ. I'm 100% strong in my body. Everything's alive and well in my body. And I have a perfect memory too. I remember everything. Short term and long term. I have perfect vision. Perfect hearing. My heart. My, heart, my lungs, my, lungs, my kidneys, my kidneys every, organ every organ works perfectly the way perfect. God created them to work. And they'll, no and they'll do no less than that in Jesus' name. Jesus. And Lord, I give you all the glory. Lord, all the glory. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. That feels good, doesn't it? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's why you talk to yourself. Yeah. Amen. Right. No plague will come near my dwelling. That's no. Right. If it tries to, it will die instantly. Instant. No sicknesses, no diseases, no weapons formed against me will prosper. A thousand can fall at my side. We yes. believers experienced that That's in 2020. Right. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. A thousand, you probably didn't realize you, you experienced Psalm 91 in 2020 yes. during the oh, COVID. Yeah. A thousand shall fall at our side. And they did. And 10,000 are our right hands, but it will not come near me. Yeah. It will not come near us. No evil will befall us. No yeah. plagues will come near us. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. See you tonight, Amen. Pastor. I'll turn it over Hallelujah. to you. Hallelujah. All right. Y'all are blessed. Lord. Oh, let me mention this. My, 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 the newest book I have is came out in 2020. It's called The Power of the Christian Leader. But I'm bringing the, I, I wanted to bring this uh, up to you because one of the chapters in the book is called Bringing Your Supply. So if you want more teaching about that and about the anointing, another chapter is about knowing your gifts and abilities and that you're anointed. So if you, if you like to have some reference material, something you can go back and read and study, look up the scriptures. It's called The Power of the Christian Leader on our book table back there. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Stay right here. Remember, over the years, we've heard of people that said, well, I, I have the anointing of Rodney Howard Brown, mm -hmm. and I have the anointing of, of uh, you know, all these different people because I went there and I had them lay yep. hands on me. So yep. they even listed on their website, or you know. Norval's anointing. Yeah, Norval's anointing, everybody's anointing. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, uh, but the anointing that God's given you is much better than what he's given someone else. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so then it even got to the point where people would go lay on the gravestones. Yep. Oh, yeah. uh, there's a word oh, for that. I can't think of what that word is. But they'd go to... Uh, uh, yeah, get there and try to get there. Annoying. Some of the famous yeah. evangelists, yeah. and they would lay oh, yeah. on their gravestone or on the grave oh, yeah. and just lay there oh, to yeah. receive the anointing from that, uh, yes. uh, uh, oh. that oh, minister. Oh, we've done that, yeah. 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 You did that. Okay. Yeah, we did that. We didn't okay. lay on it. Not to get the anointing. No, we didn't lay on anything. You went and looked at the gravestone. Well, yeah, this is several years ago. There, um, 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 William Branham's gravesite. Yeah. We we're up in Louisville, pre up there in yeah. a meeting, and they said we're going to go to William Branham's gravesite, and um, and we I said no, I don't want to go to that, and then we waited a while. We had lunch with the ministers, and they said again, now, how many of y'all want to go? We're all going to go out to William Branham's gravesite, and I said okay, let's go. I, I'll go. I'll go out and see it. So we went out there. And um, and uh, yeah, we, we we were around the gravesite there, and uh, yeah, that you could you could feel the the anointing coming okay. out of the ground. Okay. It's like Elijah's bones. Okay. I mean, it was real. I I I, I just went just because they went. I didn't expect I didn't expect sure. anything to happen, but I was standing there and I, I could I could feel it feel the anointing coming up my legs there. And, but you don't uh, but that's not how you, to minister. No, but right. that's not how you get anointed. Though. No, no. There is a truth in that's what I'm saying. Okay. Just like Elijah's bones. Sure. Yeah. You know, whoever, even when they. Well, that's the, why they do it because yeah. it's Elijah's bones. It did say the man that was raised from the dead off Elijah's bones now had Elijah's anointing. Right. It just means it was a real. It, the, the anointing, it, there's truth there, but that's not how but you get the anointing. You have an anointing that that's God's it. given you that's yeah. very important for the calling right. that you have on your life. Yeah. And you don't need their anointing because that's not what you were called to do. Well, you have right? Jesus anointing. You have Jesus anointing. You do whatever God's yeah. called you to do. If you think about it, 
I don't need Brother Hagin's anointing because I already got it. Uh, then he has Jesus anointing. Well, there you go. Normal has Jesus anointing. There you Smith go. Smith Wigglesworth has Jesus anointing. So you have a supply. Yeah, well, I got a supply. That's great. Yeah. That's great. You're ready to roll. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, y'all ready to receive an offering? Amen. Um, and for you online and for those here, uh, if you would like to support the ministry of the Normans, uh, we'd like to give you that opportunity. So now we have uh, a monthly missions that we do. Uh, every month we support a different missionary. And uh, when a guest speaker comes, we'll give them that month as our missionary. So this month is the missionary offering for the Normans. And that way, people have more than one service or one week or whatever to think about how they'd like to sow into the mission of your ministry. And so uh, there's many ways to give. And those that are here, I have an envelope that you can use. You could write a check and put cash in there. And there's a, a box in the back that you can put the offering in there. Uh, and, and if you want something to go to missions, anything that's marked missions that comes through any avenue to the church for this month, all of that will go to the Norman's ministry and uh, for coming here and being our missionaries for this weekend. We send them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For those that are online, uh, you can give by going to the website, tmhnow.org. Go to the page that says giving and just click on that and just follow the instructions. And uh, you'll be using a system called Tithely, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. That's automatic setup there. But you can separate your gifts. If you have a gift for the church, a tither, an offering, you can mark it that way. If you have missions, anything marked missions, again, goes toward the Normans for this whole month. Amen? Amen. And so we'll give them that. And plus, we usually add a little bit to it, you know. Yeah. Make sure it's uh, nice and healthy. So send them in Jesus' name. So uh, also, you can get the app, the Tithely, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y app for your smartphone. Put that on your phone, and then you can look up the Master's House, but there's more than one, so make sure you get the Master's House in Mechanicsville. And when you do that, it, it'll give you some options. You can give to tithes and offerings, or you can do your missions gift there. Just make it clear, and we'll make sure that your money goes to the place where you desire. Can somebody say amen? amen. Let's pray over our offering. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for the word that came today. We thank you for this ministry, and we thank you for ample supply for both this ministry and the Normans as they travel around the world sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We give by faith. We give with joy and thanksgiving, Lord. Use it in many ways to accomplish much more than we could ever ask or think. We believe this in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Before we say goodbye, uh, for those online, if you want to know more about us, go to our website at tmhnow.org, tmhnow.org. Go there, and you can find out more about us. We also have a second website about how to bring the Word of God into your family called familybiblerevolution.com. Go there, it'll be a real blessing. Let's, uh, let's pray. I'm going to pray over everyone here, and I'm going to pray over everybody online. Don't forget, tonight, what time? 7 o'clock. Right here, 7 o'clock, or online-ish. Uh, ish you know because sometimes we uh, the online takes a little longer to get it going but uh, please join us for the third message and uh the final message that's sad but uh, it's going really quick but uh it's good we'll 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 be good but i'll be here you're going to be here they're going to be here amen father we thank you for this time i call everybody here and i call everybody who's online or watching this uh, in later days i call you blessed i call you happy healthy whole uh, uh, I call you fulfilling the will of God for your life in the name of Jesus. And I call that you hear the voice of God and yeah. you are supplied with yeah. everything that you need. And you yeah. are anointed right. with God's called you to do. And he's enabled you to do exactly what he's called you to do in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 We'll say goodbye to everybody. Thank you for coming. We'll see you tonight at 7. Amen. Be blessed.